Hi everyone, welcome back to All Things Academic with Erica, aka Professor Lloyd. On my channel, we talk about academic lifestyle and planning for passion and productivity. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if this is your second or third or fourth or fifth time, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna be giving seven tips for avoiding burnout. So I didn't say managing burnout. So the reason I wanted to do this video is because Nature recently posted an article, I'll post the link below, that basically talked about how burned out academics are in the current environment. So they talked about some data that showed that 70% of US faculty reported feeling stressed out. There were lots of different explanations in the article as to why this was. And I thought it was a pretty well done piece and I wanted to weigh in and share some tips for how I avoid, manage, burnout, which is those feelings of exhaustion, losing passion in your work, not being as excited about the research or excited about the teaching or the parts about our job that really get us fired up. It's especially relevant in this environment. So some of us may have been trending towards burnout under normal circumstances and under these extenuating circumstances, you may be feeling burnt out as well. So I'm going to be sharing my seven tips for how to avoid burnout. Tip number one try to stay organized. So under normal circumstances, I'm a pretty organized person, but under these circumstances, I try to stay a little bit more organized than usual. And what that looks like is that I might schedule breaks. Because we're on our computers for an extended period of time now, as we're in this online environment, you wanna make sure that you're scheduling breaks. So one thing that I found myself doing was just scheduling my meetings back to back to back. And under normal circumstances, you might be walking to another office or walking down the hall to get water. You want to make sure that you're scheduling your break. And the way that I schedule my writing breaks, for example, is I write for 25 minutes and I take a five minute break. Or I write for 45 minutes and I take a 15 minute break. So you really want to try to stay as organized as possible. Another way that I stay organized is at the end of every day, I write myself little notes for the next day. And on the weekends when I have time, Sunday is usually a good time for me, I like to write notes to myself about what I need to do in the following week. The reason why I find that scheduling is um, really helpful for me and helping me stay organized is because I don't have to think about what needs to be done next. So I tend to plan in these very, in a low stress time so that when the craziness of the week starts, I can just do exactly what my organized brain tells me to do, so that I'm not scrambling and trying to figure out what's the next thing that I need to do. Tip number two is to draw on your support networks in whatever way that you can. So we might not be able to see people as often if you're a really social person. You wanna make sure that you're staying as connected as you can, drawing on those support networks. And we know that social support can be really important for fostering our mental health. And so there are lots of different ways that we can stay connected. One thing that my family has done is created um, group chats. And so we try to stay as connected through text message, social media channels, um, calling each other on the phone as connected as we possibly can so that we don't feel as isolated. One thing that the Nature article talked about that I really appreciated was they mentioned that if engaging on social media is actually a source of stress for you. So engaging with our friends and family on social media can often alleviate those feelings of isolation. But if you're constantly seeing messages that provoke stress and anxiety, you wanna try to limit exposure to those stressful, um, to those triggers. You might wanna practice disengaging or unplugging from social media if it creates more stress for you. Tip number three is to listen to your body. So this is a really important tip because burnout is often preceded by many different feelings, including thoughts, feelings, lack of passion, and things that used to light you up before. So you used to be really excited about your research. You used to really be excited about the topic. And burnout is often preceded by lack of interest in those topics. And it might be preceded by physiological symptoms, such as pain. So you wanna listen to your body and give your body what it needs. It may not sound that important, but it's really important to make sure that we're attuned because our body 
body is telling us if we've been sitting for too long or if we're dehydrated. We wanna make sure that we're not just um, focusing on the mental part of our jobs, we wanna focus on the physical part of our jobs too because everything is connected. And physical pain and physiological symptoms can actually hinder all the intellectual thinking that we want to engage in. Tip number four, which some people might not appreciate, but if you are trending towards burnout or overextended, as I am, often overextended and overasked, tip number four is to practice saying no. <laughs> Practice saying no. A senior colleague recently shared with me that when we say yes to something, we're actually saying no to something in the future. Because when you're saying yes to something, you're committing your time and energy and intellectual energy to this activity that may prevent you from doing something else that you need to do in the future. And that really resonated with me when my colleague shared that with me because I thought, wow, I get lots of asks to do lots of things, but we wanna make sure that we're not over committing because when we overcommit, we might not be able to help anyone, including ourselves, because we're just kind of sinking in a sea of requests. So I'll give you a couple um, tips for how to say no if you're a person that has difficulty saying no. One way that you can decline a request is to say, that sounds like a great opportunity, and unfortunately I'm unavailable at the time, but please keep me in mind for the future. Another way to politely decline is to say, while this sounds like a great, this sounds like a great opportunity, unfortunately I'm unavailable, and to provide a list of references and recommendations. So you can recommend a friend or a colleague. Um, if it's an, a speaking engagement, for example, that I'm not available for, I like to refer other colleagues, especially junior colleagues. And most of the time when I provide a list of other people I would recommend, I get really positive responses back. Thank you so much for providing these references. I'll follow up and we'll check back with you in the future. Finally, if you are a very assertive person and you don't need any of these tips, just say no. You know, just say no without apology. And I think we need to practice more of that, just declining without explanations. Tip number five is to use affirmations. I really like affirmations because they are ways to validate ourselves in a context where we're constantly evaluated, constantly questioned. Burnout can be precipitated by many things, including not feeling appreciated. I like to be my own best cheerleader. And I even write my affirmations down on little pieces of paper or post-it notes and I stick them around my computer or I say them regularly. And one of my favorite affirmations currently is, I am doing the best that I can given the circumstances that we're in. And that may sound super basic, but just giving yourself permission to do your best and validate yourself for doing your best given all of these external constraints. But really, given the circumstances that we're in, which are really unprecedented, many of you are doing your best. So create these affirmation statements for yourself, validate yourself, and remind yourself that you are doing your best. Tip number six is to develop a list of self-care activities. And the reason why you wanna do this not when you're feeling totally burnt out in emergency mode and just trying to survive. You wanna generate this list when you're feeling good and happy is because when you're feeling depleted, you wanna to go to that list and engage in those activities that really make you feel like a whole person. And this list of self-care activities is gonna vary by person because there are different things that make you feel whole. So some people, um, engaging in self-care might be doing things to take care of your health. It might be exercising, attending an online yoga class, or watching a funny video. Self-care might be um, gardening. I love to work in our garden. Self-care might be something simple like going outside and standing in the sunshine and just letting your body soak in some of this vitamin D. So tip number seven is don't be afraid to seek professional help or help of a professional, which could include a coach, a counselor, a mental health professional. So if you're trending towards those feelings and just really feeling depleted and hopeless, don't be afraid to talk to a professional. And one way that you can engage in those services is a lot of employers have what's known as an employee assistance program. So look into your employer to see if they have these services because through employee assistance programs, they often offer mental health services for 
a number of sessions for their employees for free. So you might not have to pay for those services and it's many times not even included in your um, healthcare insurance or package. So they might give you a certain number of sessions to see a um, therapist or a counselor. If you're a graduate student, tap into those resources that are available on campus through the different centers or through the counseling center. Definitely take advantage of those services that you already pay for with your student fees. And I'll post some links below for people that are seeking other types of mental health services that might not be included in an employee assistance program or through campus resources or other resources. So I'll post some links below of places that you can find mental health professionals. Part of being a whole person. So we take care of our mental, emotional, physical health. We are living under unprecedented, extenuating circumstances in our lifetimes that we have not experienced. And so just be kind to yourself and know that you are doing your best, you are excellent, and you are worthy. Hopefully these seven tips are helpful to you all. If you found value in this content, give it a like or a thumbs up and consider subscribing and share with a friend who may also be experiencing or feeling like they're trending towards burnout. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye everyone!